Hello friends, welcome to our channel Creating Essence. I am Megan. This is Tanner. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Yeah. Oh, he's tired. Yes. Tanner had his checkup with the veterinarian today and we wanted to give you all a little update on our sweet guy. Go on. Good boy. A little recap on Tanner's story, if you aren't familiar. We found him on the side of the road. He was tiny and infested with fleas and ticks and worms. He was super dehydrated and running down the side of a really remote country road. In the super hot sun and his coat had been shaved. He was really in rough shape. It was a weekend, so animal control was closed. So we took him to the house, the single house that was within two miles of the location, and they didn't know who he was or who he, or who he belonged to. So we just took him home with us. We immediately got him food and water, gave him a bath to start getting rid of all those fleas and ticks, removed a whole lot of ticks, Took his picture and posted it on all the local boards that we could find, hoping to find his family. Ultimately, we found his mama's family who recognized him as one of a recent litter that they'd had and they'd given him away to someone who kind of against their better judgment, but had promised it was a good home and clearly by his literally starved and abused shape, it was not actually a good home. Lots of other details and uh, hoops to jump through later, and he became ours. We were totally happy to foster him and get him back to good health, but it really, it became apparent that his last home was not some place he should return, and his original family could not take him back because they had given away their puppies for a reason. By that time, my kids had all bonded so deeply with him, we couldn't imagine getting rid of him. And besides that, it kind of seemed like it would be more traumatic for him to go to yet another home after all he'd been through in nine short weeks of life. That really is the short version of his story. We took Tanner to the vet when he'd been with us for two days and he was anemic. He had signs of heartworms even at such a young age. He was really infested with fleas and ticks and internal parasites, even with all the measures we had already taken in the two days that we had him. And he was really underweight. He also had intense food insecurity. He was just so scroungy. We kept out free choice food at all times, food and water for him good quality puppy food and he ate and drank a lot and yet still anytime he could smell any food cooking or I was loading the dishwasher with dirty dishes he would get frantic like his life depended on him snatching any crumb he could find. His mother is a yellow lab mix, his father is unknown. He looks like he has a lot of golden retriever genes and he also has some pretty distinct Great Pyrenees type of characteristics and growth patterns now that he's actually getting a healthy diet. At his first appointment at the vet, he was 11 pounds. And today, two weeks later, he was over 20 pounds. He's doing so much better. He has no signs of heartworm anymore. He did get his second dose of medication for heartworm just because it's one of those things you take seriously and you really want to get rid of thoroughly. No more fleas, no more ticks, no more anemia. He also had a bad cough when we got him and no more coughs at all. He has huge amounts of energy. He's not quite as eager to please as our Australian Shepherd was when he was a puppy, but that's pretty characteristic of Australian Shepherds. So he has tons of energy and he is learning for sure. He's very, very smart, but he's a little more mischievous than our last dog. We also weren't able to fully kennel train him. 
We do put him in the kennel when everyone has to leave the house, which is pretty rare these days given the current state of society. But that's really a safety thing. With Cooper, our Australian Shepherd, we were able to make the kennel a really happy place like it was his bedroom and he happily went there for naps. He kept his toys there. The kids weren't allowed to pester him or go into his kennel. So it was always really like his safe space and literally his bedroom. He would sleep in his kennel every single night and he was happy there. I'm pretty sure it stems to some kind of trauma with cages in, in a previous home but he, we could not do anything to calm him down at all regarding a kennel, much less make it a happy place. So he doesn't sleep in the kennel at night. He's definitely not kennel trained, <laughs> which still at his young age means we're having some accidents at night because he's not always good about waking me up during the night to go out to go potty. He's very, very smart and he's excellent with house training during the day. So I am confident that he will get the hang of it and everything will work out just fine. He's already coming when he's called. He's learning stay. He's doing very well with sit commands. So he's really smart and he's picking up on things and his food insecurity has drastically decreased. I know it's ideal for dogs to have a scheduled meal time, you know, meals twice or three times a day, however it works for a family. But at this point, we're still just giving him free choice food because we really, really want to imprint on him that food insecurity is not a thing in our family. He's still, I think mostly out of habit, likes to get into the dishwasher when I'm loading the dishwasher with dirty dishes, but I can tell him no, stop, and tell him to sit, and he'll just sit there and watch me, and once in a while I'll get a little eager and get up to lick a plate, but he'll listen when I tell him to sit back down. He's not acting at all anymore, like, you know, his life depends on those last little niblets he can scrounge before I close the dishwasher. I know a lot of people commented on our first video about Tanner's rescue. Uh, that I must be kind of crazy for being almost eight months pregnant and taking in a rescue pup and a Labrador at that. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this is just kind of how we live our lives. But I figure by the time Giovanna's is born in August, he'll be pretty well trained. And even if he's not, my people will be pretty well trained in how to handle him. So it should be all right. Thank you all so much for your love and support across all of our social media platforms on Tanner and his rescue and your love expressed for him and your encouragement for our family. It has meant so much. He is such a joy to have. He has so much energy. He and Cooper are really learning how to play so well. Cooper has been the only dog in the family since we adopted him five years ago. So it's been a really different experience for him to get used to playing with a puppy. But Tanner's also learning how to respect him where he'll play and when, you know, Cooper lays down the doggy law, Tanner will submit and listen to him and back off a little. So they're coming to a great understanding and they really do enjoy each other and enjoy playing, which is probably a good thing for Cooper's weight too, considering how much puppy chow he is now eating. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for your love and support for our sweet little rescue guy. I hope you all are having a great week and we will see you again soon. Nice Tanner boy. Tanner! What are you doing? Thanks you sweet Tanner boy. Are you taking a nap under the stairs?